uh, and hemp production sectors uh, with the aim of creating interconnected and interregional supply chain between operators uh, in primary production, agri-food processing and green chemistry um, to make stronger the industrial symbiosis and sustainable and renewable business models uh, in the hemp sector. Mm -hmm. Okay, the MCLEP project uh, has uh, two main pillars. The first pillar is to improve the management skills and performance of cluster manager and uh, um, make stronger the cluster excellence capacity uh, through a specialist and multidisciplinary training course, but also improving the portfolio of business support services. Uh, the second main pillar is to enhance uh, collaboration networking activities between European clusters and organization, uh, promoting internalization, technology, and knowledge transfer. Mm, this pillar is uh, was carried out uh, through an extensive communication and activities uh, and exchange good practices, uh, uh, but also through ad ad the activation of new opportunities for growth and capacity of excellence for cluster and their members. Uh, and uh, finally, facilitating the B2B and C2B collaborative activities. Um, okay, second. Uh, why we choose AMP? Uh, probably you know better than me, but uh, um, with its unique properties um, um, and, uh, and uh, a wide range of application is a valuable crop for the bioeconomy, contributing to achieve climate neutrality, although still represent a new crop in Europe. Um, the project is co-founded by the competitiveness of enterprise and small medium sized enterprise program, uh, which is a program that uh, aim to promote uh, growth and strengthening the competitiveness and sustainability of enterprise in Europe. Uh, this uh, program is built on the European Cluster Collaboration Platform, uh, which is uh, a platform that uh, serves as a unique one-stop shop for information, learning and collaboration opportunities for industrial clusters across, across Europe. Uh, this slides just to mention that uh, uh, with the aim of finding the best, uh, the best matchmaking opportunities for organization in the bioeconomy and hemp sectors, the, um, the, um, the, the project, the project uh, sorry, can you mute your microphone, please? Okay. The MCLEP project um, made an interactive digital map of industries operating the AMP sector in Europe. Um, I want to mention this because uh, you can also be part of our interactive map uh, by registering your organization at this link and uh, you can find the map on our website at this link. This is a digital interactive map so you can a different filter to find uh, the best organization for you. Uh, you can find here our contact, so the website, but also our social media pages and our email if you want more info. Uh, about the Rural Bioop project, uh, the Rural Bioop project uh, is uh, a project that aims to enhance the rural uh, bioeconomy for the European region. Uh, the project uh, is founded under the Horizon Europe funding program, program uh, with the aim of uh, promoting the, tra the transition to a circular, sustainable, uh, regenerative, inclusive and right by economy in all, uh, in all Europe regions, uh, supporting the adoption of small scale bio-based solution in rural areas in line with territorial characteristics and uh, stimulating the development of sustainable value chain towards the production of bio-based product, facilitating connection between the agriculture sector, research development in the innovation sector and the industrial sector. Okay, so the, the, um, the Rural Bioop project brings together uh, 12 different partners from nine different EU countries, as you can find in this slide. Uh, the coordinator uh, is 
Agency for the Promotion of European Research, APRE, from Italy. And uh, the project uh, has a duration of three years. Uh, it uh, will start uh, in October 2022 and will end in September 2023. So the main objective of this project uh, is, uh, first of all, uh, mapping, integrating, and harmonizing uh, scientific, um, scientific and practical knowledge uh, in uh, uh, an operational uh, tool uh, to create uh, a comprehensive data set. Uh, the, um, the idea is to um, support stakeholders in making informed decisions and facilitate the adoption of contextually appropriate solutions um, based on the uh, territory. The second main objective is uh, um, activating multi-actor regional stakeholder networks. Uh, this uh, uh, stakeholder uh, network um, called regional hub, and uh, um, each regional hub will involve at least 30 stakeholders um, with a total of uh, 270 stakeholders involved. Uh, the, the idea is to facilitate cooperation among key regional actors and knowledge holders and identify necessary action to promote small-scale bioeconomy related value chains through innovation and adoption of the research results. Finally, the third main objective of the project is to provide, in, uh, to, to provide support to innovators to accelerate the market penetration of specific bio-based solutions. Um, with uh, different activities, for example, training, but also networking events, study visit, and so on. Uh, so, uh, this slide, just to mention that about the regional hubs, uh, we uh, are created nine different regional hubs from six different EU countries, encompassing, encompassing primary production sectors, uh, different rural geographic areas, different clim cl climatic conditions, and also different levels of bioeconomy maturity. Uh, and the Lombard Green Chemistry Association is the regional facilitator, so coordinate the one of the three hubs from Italy, uh, the Lombardy Regional Hub. Uh, you can find uh, you can find us uh, in um, uh, in the in our website, but also in social media pages, and you can find also our email to have more information and our YouTube channel. Okay, so before this um, brief introduction about our the, the, the project that organized this event, I want to um, pass the floor uh, to our first speaker, which is Stefan uh, Radmeyer from Fibers 365. So Stefan, are you here? Can yes, you share? I'm here. Uh, can you share? Hi, everybody. I'll share my screen. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, you can, we can yes. see. Yes. Okay, good. Well, first of all, welcome. Good morning to everybody. Thanks for the opportunity to talk a little bit about Fiber 365. Basically, what I have to talk about. Um, is of course not only referring to him. Um, uh, in our case, it's important to say that we are a multi feedstock company, but um, uh, we found out that hemp is a very important basis for that as well. And that's um, why I'm here today and have to talk about um, Fibers 365. So, what we do is basically written here on this um, first sheet um, it's a chemical free um, pulping process resulting in cellulose <laughs> fibers biopolymers, um, and also the relevant process energy coming from the incoming feedstock biomass. Um, why we want to do annual plants, I think we all know that. Um, I think we're all aware of the advantages. Um, but uh, I always like to show this slide to just remember everybody that um, if we are running against the carbon limit, um, CO2 emissions um, in the next um, 10 to 20 years um, we should definitely move away from wood-based cellulose um, and go for these many applications into one-year annual plants like hemp. Um, and that's why we think it will bring um, huge environmental benefits actually um, to all of us. 
Um, secondly, why aren't we doing this already? Sounds great, right? Um, but the fact of the matter is um, usually non-wood um, cellulose and um, biopolymers are just not competitive um, with wood-based cellulose. So we think the only way to do that and to be competitive is actually um, to look at the whole plant um, and not just look at certain fractions. We have to make sure that we're taking care of everything that's valuable in there and try to get something out of it. And in the worst case, even if it's only the energy to process um, the interesting fraction. So how do we do it? Um, we do this um, through something we call the multi-feedstock um, steam fiber process. Um, you might ask what that is. Um, basically, it means um, a two-step process where we use um, any kind of non-wood biomass um, that humidifies easily. We put it through a rapid steam expansion process, um, produce cellulose, um, uh, the various fractions in a basically, let's call it, a, we're in Italy, right? A minestrone. Um, it's a vegetable soup um, with all different fractions that we then separate um, into marketable products like cellulose fibers, lignin, um, and of course, it's also liquid substrate, which can either serve um, as an energy substrate ah, or a typical biogas plant. Okay, I guess that wasn't a question. Um, uh, we can also produce, of course, as I said, um, uh, biogas, um, and with that, process all the energy we need for the processing of this. And then, of course, um, we also have at the remaining end, um, after a biogas process, we still have a digest state that we can bring back to the fields. Um, now, if I may just give you a quick intro how this looks um, in practice, this is, of course, a very schematic design. But what you see here is the first step. It's the rapid steam expansion. Um, it's also known as steam explosion. Um, we didn't invent the wheel here. Steam explosion is a technique that's almost 100 years old. Um, very important, though. It needs to be very energy efficient, and it needs to be continuous. We have achieved that um, by using this kind of a system. If, you do not <laughs> if you're not familiar with steam explosion, um, basically anybody who has ever um, cooked potatoes in a rapid steam cooker um, very similar to us, um, with a little difference. At the end of your cooking process, you should never open the lid on the pot. Um, we are opening the lid. Um, that means the humidity in the biomass expands by a factor of almost five to 7,000. And that um, uh, rapid expansion basically tears apart the fabric of the biomass, and that allows us then to really separate that in a second step. The second step, um, Typically is um, what we call the agrofiber unit. Um, we can then go into different refining and separating steps where we can separate um, not only um, lignin and a chemical free or sulfur free lignin at that, um, which is very interesting and marketable because different from black liquor lignin, you do not need to um, you do not need to clean this up um, in, a, in a major process, but you can also use um, uh, uh, the same soup um, to separate other interesting fractions that are still in there. Um, and also very importantly, um, and that brings us back to the main point, um, why don't we use much more non-wood um, already today? We think that one of the reasons is that typical non-wood plants <coughs> Tend to be very difficult in big centralized. Excuse me, Stefan, your microphone is, uh, I don't know, is off. You have to turn. Actually, okay. The host turned me off. Okay, here we are. Back. Sorry. So um, I don't know where we stopped. Um, that's very important. We need to be competitive again. Um, I talked about that. We think that the only way to be competitive um, with non-wood means we need to go decentralized. We cannot have big factories. We need to have small scale units. We need to go down to, let's say, yearly volumes. In our case, at least 5,000 tons of input volume. Um, but we don't need <clears throat> to be competitive um, a centralized plant with 100,000 tons. Um, with relevant capex, 
we can really go small scale. And um, the nice thing is um, going small scale and going decentralized and especially combining this with existing biogas plants, we can actually um, take um, advantage of existing supply chains. Um, many of those people already have um, biomass coming in. And if something like hemp um, is added to it, <clears throat> we can process this competitively integrated um, into an existing infrastructure. And that um, is a fundamental step to make all of this actually competitive and also possible. Because if you really want to do industrial processing of non-wood plants, you need industrial units, but these industrial units cannot be as big as um, they might be in other cases, or are they typically in a chemical processing step? So, next one. So, um, what you see here, it's um, basically multiple feedstocks, um, among them hemp, um, and multiple paper applications. Of course, these are cellulose applications. Um, we are using hemp, um, and that's really interesting. Of course, as a as a longer fiber, we can process um, uh, uh, hemp fibers up to twenty centimeters. That will not give us textile fibers um, in the end of the process, but it will give us very interesting, um, uh, 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 let's call it industrial um, leather-like applications, which are very promising in the future. But at the same time. Of course, the temp also allows to do different um, non-woven pieces. You see this on the left here. It can also go into fiber forming. It can serve um, especially as a structure for help in, in all different products here. But also, and that's very important, um, these biomasses, um, and this is actually 100% um, M365 um, biopolymer product, um, this is actually a product after enzymatic um, and then also um, bacterial treatment for the production of PHA and PHP. And as you see, there's various ways to, to valorize this, but um, we think that um, especially high value paper applications and also high value plastic applications might be the more interesting ways to make non-wood um, plants and non-wood plants like them, um, something interesting. So the markets, of course, are here. It's chemical-free fibers, it's lignin, and of course, also the energy market. Um, what's important to see here, usually we're getting exactly the amount of, bio, um, of energy out of the input biomass that we require to process. This makes us energy independent. And after this one year of um, the one year cycle, actually also carbon neutral in total. Um, uh, just repeating some important aspects, multiple biomass sources, among them hemp, um, which allows you to first, <clears throat> for example, also to start plant um, by using in the beginning maybe a higher fraction of straw or similar available biomasses, and then slowly year by year, um, a growing fraction of, of hemp plants um, into this. Secondly, it's a modular technology. Um, you can start small, you can start with 5,000 tons and then you can add on to this. Um, of course, you can make use of a cascade utilization. Um, we can use example, um, uh, we can use industrial hemp as well as um, uh, hemp grown for medicinal purposes. It really doesn't make a difference for us. So the cascade utilization um, is helpful. Um, and as I said before, um, integrating a plant like this into an existing biogas plant, for example, helps us to um, absolutely go um, into, a, into an existing CAPEX situation, which reduces the required investment. Um, chemical free, as I said, very important also because whatever waste actually in the end just stays um, can go back to the fields. It can go back to where we originally got the biomass from. Um, it's very competitive compared to wood cellulose. We're at the typical price point between, let's say, 500 to 700 euro sales price per ton of product already allows us to do this. And we have, of course, as I said, very interesting revenue streams from, from side fractions. Um, Lignin, of course, less in hemp. Um, these are some ex examples of existing sites. Um, we have a big team in Germany. We're about 20 people together um, with, a, with a technology provider in Austria as well. Um, 
And very importantly, we work with a lot of people. I think you're going to see actually a presentation also of ADM. Um, we're actually their neighbors in our site in, in Leningen, but we're also working with many other universities here. And that's it. I think um, that's just a quick run through. Of course, um, any questions, let me know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. <clears throat> I see some question in the in, in our chat. So two questions from Francesco Mirizzi from here. Hey, yeah. Uh, do you need uh, rated hemp or you can also work with uh, unrated hemp? And the second one is, uh, would you have any specific further requirement for the input materials like humidity and lean in um, percentage, et cetera? So okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much actually for the question because that's a technical point. We think that with our technology, we can basically I'm at uh, the only important thing is, as I said before, um, as long as the biomass accepts humidity, we have to come down to a, a dryness factor of about 30% to process this effectively in our system. But um, that with hemp is typically no problem. Um, we can process um, whole hemp straw, including shice and fibers. Of course, that then involves the second cleaning step because we get shice from the um, or um, if we're getting the best fibers, we just have a very effective and industrial way to create short fibers and make them into something much, much more valuable as a cellulose long fiber. So in both of these aspects, it works. Um, is there an advantage um, using hemp? Well, I think yes, um, in the sense that hemp, even as a short fiber, um, it's not going to give us textile length fibers, as I said, 30, 40 millimeters. But um, hemp will give us, even in our process fibers, between 5 to 15 millimeters. And this is especially important for, for non-woven applications, um, where it will give us a lot of strength. Did I forget another question here? Uh, there Maria. is also a question by Maximiliano Baranoff. Is too different the process to get C5 and C6 sugars? Sorry? Oh, no, no. It, well, <laughs> not really, because um, in the end, what you have to do is, of course, as soon as you have the cellulose, you still need to go into implantatic digestion. Um, that's a separate step. We offer that also as a technology step, um, especially if you want to go into, into, the, into the biopolymers. Um, but the basic uh, pretreatment is always the same. There's nothing different here. We process um, between 170 285 degrees maximum um, temperature and up to 10 bars pressures. Okay. Um, no, um, regarding the, the production of ethanol, um, uh, uh, I don't think so, because if we really look at um, what we can obtain um, for the ton of cellulose of this hemp fibers, we're getting market prices which are way beyond what you would achieve um, competing to, for example, sugarcane ethanol and similar competitive um, manners of producing ethanol. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, now another question. <laughs> Current production capacity, do you consider doing composite nitrate rubber? Um, <laughs> we have we have done uh, one very interesting trial, but actually it wasn't based on hemp. I have to say that it was based on space. Um, we were producing with AETF um, uh, uh, certain uh, rubber components. Um, they're using that for tire applications, but that is still r and I, I, I wouldn't call that already an industrial um, potential at this time. Of course, these longer hemp fibers, um, especially in composite structures, um, offer lots of benefits. My problem with these composites is that we're usually mixing, or many of the users are mixing natural fibers, of course, with um, all kinds of um, chemical or fossil-based other materials, and we will have a big recycling problem coming out of that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So if there, are, there aren't any questions... Uh, they I... can also send me the questions. Yes, yes, you can write uh, all the questions in the chat and the later uh, in the final stage of the Q&A yes, question. We can, uh, yes. We can answer. Uh, 
So uh, we skip to the second, to the third speakers, uh, Simone Giangrandi from Lucens. Are you here? Can you? Uh, here. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can... I'm trying to share a presentation. Can you yes. confirm? Yes. See. We see. Okay. So again, good morning to everyone, and thank you for it, for the invitation and to the for the opportunity to to share with you. Uh, the study that we have been conducting in the last uh, two years to assess the potential of uh, hemp fibers for the paper industry. Uh, okay, so um, my presentation will go through quickly the, these points. So I will make an introduction about Lucense and we'll explain why uh, the motivation behind the, 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 the study and, and the interest also uh, on hemp fibers. Then I will talk about uh, our experimental uh, uh, work with our uh, laboratory tests and show the results. And then I will conclude uh, after some evaluation on uh, uh, industrial scale up. Uh, so Lucense uh, from, from Italy, from Tuscany, is a non-profit consortium company uh, working uh, already from, since more than 35 years. And our mission is to uh, transfer technologies from research centers to the, to the companies and to support companies uh, in, in innovation projects. And uh, so this, is, this explains also why we work on, this, on these issues. And we have a, a unit specialized on, on paper uh, with a laboratory, uh, Centro Qualità Cartas, a center for uh, paper quality, which is the reference laboratory in Italy uh, on uh, cellulose-based materials and products. And with our laboratory, we perform uh, analysis and tests according to the, to the main uh, uh, standards. But we also uh, make uh, R&D projects and consultancies and tests and also technical support for companies. And Lucenza is also the, the manager of the technological cluster of the uh, Jonathan Toscana for the paper industry, um, which is a, a sort of a network of more than 150 enterprises and uh, more than 20 research and competence centers in, in, in Tuscany. Uh, in Tuscany, there is a huge uh, paper industry district. As you can see on the right, there are some, some figures of this, uh, of this industry. Uh, it is a leader in the production of both tissue paper and paper for uh, for cardboard and packaging in in Italy, and uh, and so InnoPaper supports let's say innovation projects and processes on sustainability, smart manufacturing, uh, product innovation, etc. So all this explains why we we start this this uh, important study uh, for the. Uh, use of hemp fibers in the, in the paper industry. And, and, and these are other uh, reasons. So uh, as you probably all, all know, the, the request, the demand for uh, uh, cellulose is increasing around the world, not only um, by the paper industry, but also um, by other sectors. And uh, let's say, um, at least for Italy, all, all the su supply of cellulose comes from, from outside. So there is a huge production in the north of Europe, and then all the rest comes uh, mostly from South America or North America. And so the increase of the demand uh, and the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the outside uh, supply also um, in, in prospect gives some uncertainties concerning the, the availability and the costs of, uh, of cellulose fibers. In addition, there is uh, an increasing need an interest to, to, to find and to use alternative fibers to replace, mostly to replace low quality ones. Uh, this is, for instance, for, for the um, paper for packaging to, to be able to reduce the grammage, which is something really requested by the market and also for uh, sustainability reasons, but also for, uh, for the tissue sector where uh, there is need to to better fiber to let's say to integrate the the, the lower quality fibers, and then there is a, a also a, a larger 
goal, which is to create uh, local production. As the previous speaker was saying, also the decentralizing production with a, a smaller, uh, let's say, production site with a lower complexity, com complexity and uh, and impacts. So what we did is to study the potential of hemp fibers in these two sectors, packaging and tissue paper. And we also received uh, fibers extracted with two, two different technologies, one uh, at semi-industrial level and the other one at laboratory level meant to, to have lower, uh, low-scale uh, uh, plants. And the, the tests, uh, the steps, sorry, we, we did in our study uh, you can see here. So we, we perform microscope and chemical analysis. And then we, let's say, we we process the fibers to make them uh, uh, to make them usable for the paper industry. And then we we create, we produce laboratory hand sheets, paper hand sheets that then we characterize and evaluate. And I will go through all these steps in, in my slides. So here is the, the first uh, stages. So there is a fiber seam emission and pulping to, to separate them and to, to make them more able to, to interact also with the, uh, with the other fibers. And then the main part is the, the refining. So um, hemp fibers normally come with a very long uh, uh, length and the uh, paper industry accepts, uh, let's say lengths below uh, four millimeters usually. And also the aim of this uh, refining is to uh, to open a bit the fibers to make them more uh, able to to connect to 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 create bonds, chemical bonds with the other fibers. Uh, because the, the let's say the goal here is to mix. I will go to this later, but maybe I introduce it now. I mean our idea is to mix M fibers with the with the cellulose fibers at different percentages and to to test also the, the results. So, so what we want to do is to have these fibers uh, connect and creating bonds with, uh, with cellulose fibers. And so as you can see, we, we use a, a, as a refinery valley, which is a typical refinery in the paper industry. And we work at a uh, low concentration till we reach high values of uh, Schopper Riegler, which is, uh, uh, let's say, typical uh, parameters in the paper industry. Uh, to measure the freeness and to measure the way uh, the, the capacity then of fibers to to lose and to and to retain or to lose water. And what we notice is that uh, we we need uh, somehow somewhat longer uh, refining times as compared to to cellulose. As you can see, we normally work for forty or sixty minutes. And sometimes we also see formation of foam, as you can see in the picture below. Uh, and these are things that will have to be also uh, assessed and, uh, and tested in the at industrial level, let's say. Uh, we see low residues uh, normally, and uh, we, we, let's say, at the end of the refining uh, process, what we obtain is a, a distribution of length of fiber, hemp fibers, like you, you see in the, in, in the graph on the right. So there is an average length around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 millimeters, and there is this kind of profile with the, uh, the majority of fibers below 0 0.5 millimeters, and then there is a long tail up to three millimeters. Uh, some other parameters we, we measure concerning uh, hash, uh, as you can see that the, the values are, are quite low, around 2%, and here you can also see comparison with the pure cellulose and uh, thermo uh, chemical, thermomechanical uh, uh, process for extraction of cellulose. And concerning also lignin, and in this case, the, the amount of lignin after the extraction varies depending on the extraction, extraction parameters, but normally we measure around 10, 20% of lignin in, in the fibers we, we received, which is, course above pure cellulose, but which is below uh, other, other, let's say, cellulose fibers uh, for the market. And so what we do, 
after refining, as I mentioned, we mix these fibers with other fibers. Uh, normally we work in the range between 10 and 30%. And, and we use them both for packaging, packaging application, mixing them with the paper for recycling, and also for the tissue sector, mixing them with, with, uh, with cellulose. Uh, the main aim is to um, use hemp fibers to improve the properties. So we start with the low quality fibers, both for packaging and, and cellulose. And so here you can see some laboratory hand sheets that we, that we make. And uh, they have different colors depending on the amount of, uh, of hemp fibers. In this case, they are made, mixed with the uh, recycled paper. And, and then we measure the, the physical mechanical properties. Mostly, the most important are tensile strength, uh, compression strength, and I will show also some bars, uh, ball bar strength, which are I mean, the, the main properties for, for uh, mostly for, for packaging, but let's say main properties for uh, measuring the, the strength, uh, the resistance of, of paper. So here concerning the uh, packaging application, there are two graphs on the left, the ball bars, the, on the right, the uh, uh, compression test. They are also normalized by the, the grammage, so by the amount of fibers in a way. And you, as you can see here, we start on the on the bottom left uh, with 100% uh, of uh, recycled, uh, low quality recycled fibers. And by adding uh, an increase uh, percentage of uh, hemp fibers, so 5, 10, 20 percent of hemp fibers, we see that the uh, the performances increase and increase quite a lot. Uh, so we can go up more than 70 percent concerning the bull burst and uh, 40 percent concerning the, the compression test. And uh, as you can see, we also get different results depending on the fibers we, we receive. So there is some variability in the in the properties of the of the fibers, and this is an issue that will need to be uh, to be tackled because, of course, paper industry then need to have a, a consistent uh, material that can be used always in the same in the same way. And you can see there is also a square spot, uh, red with a black cross. Uh, here we, we also compare hemp fibers to, to soft wood, so to better quality cellulose fibers, uh, which is added to, to shorter fibers to, to increase performances. And as you can see, more or less we get, uh, with 10% of the hemp fibers, we get more or less the same result um, as with 20% uh, of uh, soft wood. So this is a very interesting result because it means that in the paper industry process, hemp can replace uh, soft wood and can replace it with, uh, with low concentrations. Uh, other results for the tissue application. Uh, in this case, we measure tensile strength. Uh, the graphs represent the same, uh, the same. So we start with 100% uh, pure or low quality cellulose, and then we increase different amounts of hemp and we, we measure the tensile. And also in this case, we can see that the, uh, the resistance increases quite a lot up to 80%. Also in this case, there is a comparison with the soft wood. And, uh, and also in this case, we can see that in, in, some, in some cases, so with better, um, with, with the hemp fibers, with better qualities that we received, uh, we can obtain more or less the same result with the uh, 20% of soft wood as we get with the 10% of hemp fibers. And in this graph, what we also show, which is the, the lowest uh, line, uh, the results achieved with uh, another natural fiber. We, we measured in our laboratory uh, several uh, uh, raw materials and several uh, fibers or other materials. And, and we noticed that hemp uh, provides uh, the best results concerning uh, uh, resistance. So here you can see that, for instance, with this other uh, fiber, uh, we don't get this much improvement in the, in the tensile strength. Uh, 
Uh, so, so far for the good news, let's say, uh, there are sorry, some more sorry. concerns. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you have two minutes because we are a little bit late with this schedule. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, I was saying there are some more concerns about the industrial scale up evaluations. Uh, here you can see some, I mean, so, some evaluations from our side. So, in our experience, uh, there will be a necessity for the dedicated pulp preparation line in the paper mill. And probably at the moment, we have difficulties to, to get uh, the standardization of uh, fibers quality. So also the, this processing has to be uh, adjusted depending on the, on the quality of the, of the fibers. And, uh, and then there are some issues concerning the production costs and, and also volumes in the terms that at the moment that the highest quality of fibers extracted from hemp are even too good for the paper industry and probably they are a bit too expensive. A possibility would be to, to use the lower quality of hemp fibers extracted from, from hemp and to use the better qualities, for instance, for, for textile. In this case, of course, we reduce the amount of fibers available, but we could contain the costs. And the, the last concern is about uh, the logistics. Uh, probably we will need uh, at industrial scale a press to reduce the volume because the density of the material is very low and there will be also there will be need for protection about the humidity uh, during the, the logistics operations. So to conclude, uh, just to recap what I what I said quickly. So we notice a good processability at laboratory scale of M fibers and a very significant increase of uh, mechanical strength, uh, which are proportional to the amount of fibers uh, mixed with the uh, recycle of cellulose, uh, uh, virgin cellulose. And this is mm, true both for packaging application and for tissue paper and opens a possibility to uh, reduce the amount of other fibers or uh, additives. And Still investigation are needed for the industrial scale ups uh, for the reasons I just uh, just said. So thank you for your attention. Here are my my contacts. Uh, so if you need uh, more information, I'm available. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. There is a, a question in our chat. When you say short fibers, do you mean uh, arts shives or short-term bus fibers, ideally for paper application? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the... Uh, uh, you can I... find the... Um, in our chat. Yes. Uh, wait a second. Uh, there is an extraction of, of fibers from, from the... Uh, I think just a second. So we, we do, do not follow directly the, the extraction of fibers, but uh, fibers are extracted from, from the hearts, I think, and uh, they are a few centimeters long. They can be up to also to, to, to many more centimeters, up to 10 or 20 centimeters. Uh, I'm not sure if this answers the question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we can proceed, we can go on. Uh, Christoph Boye and Victor Eman. Okay, hello. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Can you share your screen? Uh, yes, of course. Thank um... you. Okay, so uh, welcome also from our side to the webinar. Um, yeah, my name is Victor Hahnemann and I'd like to introduce my colleague uh, Christoph Boyer. And yeah, uh, we are from uh, Media University in Stuttgart, um, University of Applied Sciences, and we're working at the Institute for Natural Material Processing. And yeah, we also want to talk about uh, what we're doing, where we are and uh, who we are and yeah our headline topic today is a bit more different kind um, 
it's uh, the usage of hemp residues in pulp and paper, especially residues from textile industry, uh, what we can achieve with uh, these side streams. Yeah, and, um, yes, Christopher. <laughs> yeah, a warm welcome from my side. Um, I would like <clears throat> to start by briefly introduct uh, introduction um, of our institution. Um, but uh, I will talk about the location and the background and the origins um, from our side. Um, then I will go to our motivation behind our research work, um, the path we've taken, and the main research subjects we're working on. Um, the second part, I will talk, talk about the equipment we have here at uh, the ENV in Denningen. Um, the equipment is uh, separated by the me mechanical fiber processing line, uh, the wet laid non woven line, and the pulp molding line. Um, and furthermore, I will um, give back to Victor um, and he will talk about the processing of hemp residues and um, some products we are producing. So let's start. Um, we are located in in Lenningen at the foot of the Swabian Alp in Baden-Württemberg, Germany, um, roughly between Stuttgart and Ulm, um, are based here at the old paper um, factory Schäufelen. Um, yeah, our team is kind of small. Uh, we've got one research pro uh, professor, Mr. Matthias Franz, and uh, six additional uh, research assistants, like us two. Um, yeah, our teamwork um, primarily combine topics from packaging technology and paper production, um, printing, um, and textile science, and be completed by mechanical uh, engineering and agriculture technology. Uh, let's have a quick look at our path. Um, the packaging technology degree program is our route um, from the University of Applied Science in Stuttgart and so on uh, with, with um, initial work starting in 2018 here in Leningen um, with the first wet laid machine from the TETF. Um, we founded the research campus in Leningen in 2019. Um, then we do some renovation work at the old um, metal workshop from 2020 to 2022, and finally found the Ian in 2022. Um, let's have a look at our um, yeah our main subject. Uh, we're working with natural materials. Um, these natural materials um, have many influencing um, variable variabilities. Um, so there's no standardized processes as they are handling in uh, plastics and metal. Um, these um, variables um, are influenced from the, um, by the origin, the growth, the aging of the material, as well as the harvest time, and so on. So um, it's difficult to harmonize these factor, um, factors by one standardized processing technology. Um, so our way is to look at the one side from the material to the process and then the other side from the process to the material. And by um, considering these two dimensions, dimensions um, we have more possibilities to achieve the motivation of our work. Um, to be able to use natural materials in a process safe manner. Um, how do we achieve this goal? Um, we're working mainly on research subjects uh, funded by the uh, state of Baden-Württemberg from the Ministry of Food, uh, Rural Areas and Consumer Protection. Um, these subjects are separated in two main parts, the preparation of the natural material and the production with natural material. Um, at the one hand, we, uh, we have a look at the factors before the usage, like harvesting, growth, and um, potential um, previous usage. Um, and at the other hand, we have a look at the uh, um, production side, um, like evaluating the production processes, um, the methods, as well as the factoring, uh, as, as well as the factors um, influencing these. 
Um, by having a look at the equipment, um, our mechanical fiber processing is split up into a dry part and a wet part. By the dry part, we use mainly um, textile machines in cooperation with the University of Reutlingen um, by carding, um, especially hemp and um, tearing with the tuft opener. Then furthermore, we, um, we cut the material with a guillotine or a cutting mill, uh, depends on the fiber length we want. Um, to go on to the um, wet part, like various pulp and deflaker, and um, finally the refining with various refiners, and um, including also belly beater. Um, by having a look on the wet laid machinery, um, this one is some um, two layered wet laid machine in a modular line, so um, we can choose and switch our um, drying systems like the microwave or the convection drying um, to use it for a, for a special purpose. Um, the newest drying method is our microwave. Um, we see great potential in this for energy efficient pre-drying process uh, to heat up the uh, material from the inside. And finally, we use various coating systems like a spray coater or roll reverse coater. Um, and finally, for my part, the pulp production, uh, the pulp molding, sorry. Um, we have a pulp molding machine and type three thermoforming um, with traditional tool sets, but um, I will highlight that we, um, we produce our own 3D printed tool sets to optimize the molding process for various fibers and various applications into the part um, we want to have. So I will give the word back to Victor again. Thank you. Yeah. Now uh, we've heard a lot uh, of what we have in Lenningen and uh, what we do with hemp. Uh, and yeah, hemp has uh, a lot of uh, common advantages, I think, um, for pulp production. Well, well, one of the biggest is uh, the low lignin content, the base lignin content. So we have good accessibility um, of the fiber to uh, yeah absorb water. Um, and we have a pretty high length diameter ratio, which is one of the biggest advantage for uh, wet late technology and also for uh, special abilities. I came later to that uh, or back to that point. Um, and we therefore get, uh, get a high fiber flexibility and this increases mechanical bondings, uh, bindings in, in the web. And therefore we don't need uh, only that hydrogen bondings. This is pretty uh, good for that fiber. Yeah, <clears throat> then the use of hemp at the iron uh, far, uh, what we are using is mainly, as I said, uh, hemp residues from the textile industry. They uh, give us uh, short fibers, textile short fibers. So for paper making, they're still pretty long. Um, below 10 millimeters, um, you can't use uh, hemp fibers pretty good below 10 millimeters in dry laying processes. Yeah. So. Um, we use these uh, kind of fibers in our processes on and also uh, inferior parts of the plant, like the lignified components and shives. And the, the demands uh, in processing these uh, fibers are for us to get them to an um, average length of uh, two or yeah, two to six millimeter. Um, so between the textile length and the paper used length or paper maker used length. Um, and a second demand is clearly the palpability or the disintegration of the fibers because this is one big disadvantage of hemp if you use them in a wet state that they are uh, agglomerating pretty fast and knotting uh, in, in water in suspension. Um, and third, the separation, as I said, is uh, pretty important um, for fiber and shive because both together it is not good for your process. You have to separate the fibers from the shives and you have to treat the shives different than the fiber. Um, and yeah, last but not least for us, the biggest point is uh, we want to achieve that by only uh, treat mechanical, by only a mechanical process. Okay, I think there's a microphone on. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on. Um, here is a little example process uh, to uh, 
yeah, process hemp residues uh, to pulp. Um, first of all, uh, when we get uh, residues, they're often acclimated in a, in a, by the textile industry, by pre-treated processes or something like that. So we have to first uh, dissolve the fiber flakes uh, to get uh, elementary fibers or less fiber bundles. Um, and we do that by tearing and carding, as Chris said, with textile machines in a tripod. And this is pretty relevant for the fiber separation, uh, fractionation, um, and clean cutting. This is with all the plant fibers, it's pretty important to fractionize uh, the, the fibers pretty good. Um, the second, then we want to cut the fibers to uh, get a good palpability to avoid knotting. Because if you have one long fiber, like a 10 millimeter fiber in the suspension, this fiber will uh, mechanical into induce uh, knotting in pulping. So this is a big problem. Um, and then we go on in the wet state. When we cut the fibers and get a good average length, we uh, deflate the fibers in traditional paper making processes like uh, in a deflaker or in a refiner with a wider gap. Um, and this is pretty important to uh, yeah, increase the amount of elementary fiber and uh, yeah, reduce the amount of agglomerated, uh, yeah flakes inside the, uh, the suspension. And the last but not least, the, uh, the classical uh, paper making, uh, mechanical treatment, the refining, uh, yeah, to increase the surface area, the, the quality of your web in uh, the wet, uh, in the paper making process or the non-woven process. And it's pretty important for the strength improvement. Um, yeah. If you um, don't, sorry, uh, sorry for the, the interruption. Uh, yeah. You have two minutes because we are a little bit late with the schedule. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you don't use uh, these processes in a good way, you see that at the left, you get a big uh, knotting at your uh, at the very finer discs. Um, so this is a big problem. Um, yeah, you can conquer that problem by uh, yeah create uh, a bit more uh, uh, industrial like uh, processing method. Uh, yeah, by a force feeding you see on the right with a pump, this is more um, comparable to that uh, refining processes in, in, in the industry. So this is pretty important for us to get a good uh, comparability of our results. Um, yeah, and you can also achieve that by lower concentration um, to, or by applying more shearing on your hemp fibers uh, to get a better result in, in, in the refining process. Um, yeah, and also we, uh, in the science, we have to uh, classify a bit more what we are doing. So we um, have a big uh, analysis uh, uh, lab, um, especially with a valnut fiber analyzer. With hemp fibers, this analyzes on its top point where it um, can measure. So normally we say below seven millimeter is good uh, with this device. Um, and yeah, there we can measure all important uh, inform information on the morphology um, uh, on the fiber and yeah also we do a lot of uh, dewatering testing because this is pretty important for the whole um, machine runnability um, and there is uh, pretty pretty good you see that on the ra uh, red line uh, in that little chart below right um, hemp is pretty good in dewaterization um, in a pure mechanical treated state yeah, and here are a few products. Uh, what we produce uh, on the tab left, the top uh, left, you see a non-woven. Um, as Stefan Rademeyer said, this is, uh, yeah, the, the, the quality you get from hemp out of non-woven is a bit like region leather. This is uh, pretty interesting and something for the future. And also you see uh, next to it on the right, non-woven with spelt house. So you can use long fibers, long hemp fibers as a natural binding material. Um, so if you put 10% of your whole mass of fiber inside of it, you get a pretty good binding capability. Um, and you can use that also to um, yeah, give some uh, function in the material like seeds or something like that. And with hemp, you have a big advantage because of the biocompatibility. You don't have any chemical treatment, so it's good for the soil, better for the soil. Um, in the top, uh, you see some pulp molded products out of hemp residues with pretty, pretty uh, good, um, yeah, uh, um, yeah, stability in in the molded product. Um, on the top right, uh, some 
refined hemp shafts binded with CTMP. The hemp shafts in a pure mechanical treated way don't have pretty good binding capabilities, so you have to put any other binder inside of it. And in the bottom, you see something pretty special. It's uh, something we are working a lot with. It's the wet forming process. It's a pretty new process of forming uh, a natural based material, and hemp has one of the be uh, best, uh, yeah, best properties to use in, in, in this process because of its great uh, elongation capability in the wet state. And, and this is pretty unique to the whole of the best fibers. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this was it from our side and, and yeah, feel free to contact us. We are open for projects or for, um, yeah, for anything. So feel free, yeah. Are there any questions? Thank you, thank you very much. There are two questions. Yes. Uh, did you see in the in the chat? I uh, yeah. two minutes because we are late. <laughs> okay. And, uh, uh, for additional question, you can uh, uh, do it in the in the final session of, in the final Q and A. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. But if you want, you can. Uh, Answer to one or two. I don't um, know. It's only the one on eleven oh eight. Yeah, the scale up, as I said, um, for us it's pretty important with the whole refining process to get that on an industrial comparability. And um, yeah, the scale up depends a lot on your pre-treatment. If you, we use the hemp fiber in a pretty long state. So with um, the point where, our, where we are at the moment, the scale up isn't, yeah, it's not that good because uh, the hemp fibers have to be pretty good treated. And if you do, don't do that, uh, you get big problems on the, on the feeding capability of such long fibers in traditional paper plants. Um, so the scale up is at the moment with that refining process not, uh, yeah, not in the final stage. Yeah, the the, the issue with the residues is uh, in the first uh, process so to get uh, a good quality out of the residues to reduce your problems in the paper making process. So in the in the uh, processing level is, is the problem from our side. Yeah, the first processing. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I go on with the next speaker, and I kindly ask everyone who has question, additional question, to ask them during the final during the final Wednesday session. And uh, so, thank you very much for your contribution. Yeah. Um, I left the floor to Papax. Michael or Taishin, I don't know. Are you all here? together? Yes. Okay. Hello. Hi, together. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. So I think uh, we begin with uh, Papex and what we are doing with my person, and then I shift to to Michael with uh, the hemp uh, production process, etc. Is it okay? Okay. Thank you. Can you share Great. your screen? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Boom. Okay, okay. great. And so, yeah, thank you very much. It's very interesting to hear uh, how many activities are in, in hand. I think um, everybody who knows me knows that uh, I trust really in hand. <laughs> so for, for my position, my name is Tassin Duck and I'm the founder and the CEO of Papex Group. And what Papex is doing is basically uh, many years uh, to, to, to rebuild and build capacities in, in all Europe and scale up in the, in the global scale at the moment. Um, so we are molded pipe producer. So basically our DNA is um, very, very close to renewable materials. So I think uh, lots of the guys uh, joining this uh, event, um, it is that um, I tried here at Papex from biogas plant till wet uh, grass or sweet grasses, um, of course, hemp, uh, bamboo, 
Um, reusable material is the key and the technology which I would say to substitute plastics and, and bring really globally for circular economy. So, so this is my point of view. Um, let me share with you some uh, share with you some some pictures and and what we're doing here. So, yeah, okay, yeah. Thanks, Lara. So, um, we are um, basically a group. Um, who are producing in in Europe? Basically, the Green Holding is um, one of the largest uh, model part producer with um, innovation hub in in Cologne, where the headquarter is. And uh, here in our um, hub, um, R and D hub, with our scientists, we develop and and um, prepare. Um, the, the different renewable materials, yeah, um, and uh, this will bring us in the next um, years fully from a change of um, cellulose from trees um, to, to to hemp. So this is this is our goal, and this is what we are doing today. So the processes we are very familiar with that. What we are hearing here from from the gentleman. Um, and ladies um, from the different institutes, um, and basically that what we can then produce um, and to shift from uh, fresh fiber cellulose to, to the hemp is from the transportation the goods, protection goods, to home care, uh, to, to products with uh, uh, plant-based coatings, which gives us shelf life and an oxygen transmission and water vapor transmission, so we are fully plastic free and we go in, in our production portfolio and product portfolio um, to um, biodegradable um, and to recyclable. So we believe in circular economy that you really work with the resources again and again and again. And hemp is one of uh, the fibers which we have focused um, now and for the next years a lot of to change this. So our collaborations with different paper mills and with different of customers um, is exactly that what gives us the feeling because of the um, CO2 footprint, the, the LCAs, and all of this, what, what is less water, uh, less pesticides. So this makes this, this fiber and this plant really very, very unique in my point of view. Yeah? So from cosmetic industry to food industry, is, is that what Papex core business is? So we produce in different locations in Netherlands, with the Giga factories in Thuringia, in eastern of Germany. Um, we um, produce uh, the, the, um, the hemp and grow that in, in Ukrainian, but this is the part of, of Michael. So um, basically, the big picture was always uh, many years ago to change one day with our capabilities, really, the, the different of fibers. So this is basically um, from from my point. So circular economy is one of our driver why we we are doing and developing and investing a lot of um, this renewable material because we find out, of course, um, like the others, that um, if you want to go for circular economy and substitute plastics and CO2 footprint, it don't make really sense to grow uh, a tree forty years or twenty years or even a eucalyptus uh, seven years um, and then for industrial standards to to produce from that single use paper or plastic etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think um the thing of hemp is much more interesting to go for this technology than on a global state because of course in different climate zones you can you can grow this uh, this product what we are doing is always to shift our technologies in our group um, to the different of renewable materials. So I think hemp alone, like 100%, yes, you can do it, but end of the day, think globally and act locally. Yeah. So renewable materials you can combine in different of recipes. And this is um, what we're doing here um, many years and to go then in different of production capabilities. Yeah. So um, basically, uh, you see a little bit more about the technology stuff. Um, yeah, wet molding, thermoforming, dry molding, um, and a new technology, which we um, call 3D technology, where you can 
produce different of, of shapes like the the paper bottles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, is that what we see the next years and even now, which are a lot of products go in and the market in um, in the future? Uh, so um, we are producing at the moment. Um, in one of our factories, more than 100 million coffee capsules. This is a very exciting project. So we find out to, to set up industrial standards with the different of the renewable materials. You find out to have the data sheets, the calculation of SCA. So all of this stuff is very important to bring it really in the market. So end of the day, they, there is a stream and what kind of the stream is allowed from the political situation. I mean, you are listening like me to the PPWR, et cetera. Everything goes in the right direction, but we have to rebuild a little bit more infrastructure and see, okay, um, what is happening at this side. But the future is, from my point of standpoint, to go with our um, big customers, um, yeah, even the coffee capsules end of the day um, in hemp. Uh, so, so this is what we're doing in this world in terraforming. Um, yeah, we have combined all of these technologies with Modern Park in our group. So for me, it's not one technology better than the other technology. It's important that in my portfolio, every technology is armed for one goal, and this is circular economy. And end of the day, it makes sense maybe to combine these different technologies to produce in a, in a high quality, the best product for the best economic uh, goals. Yeah. Yeah, basically, I think I jumped very fast through the presentations, but a lot of the gentlemen and ladies here is knowing the, the, the company Capex. For me, it's very important to support also this big view of um, ministries of uh, different locations um, and, um, of course, in, 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 in all of that, what is with the hemp. We work with different of institutes from yeah, Fraunhofer till, till ATBs. Yeah, some some guys we are knowing very well. So yeah, basically this is this is my stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Tassin. Okay, I think it's a point for me to 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 jump in. Uh, first of all, thank you for for inviting us. I see a lot of familiar faces and names. Pleasure to see you, everyone. To to hear you, and uh, yeah, we were very supportive of uh, what you're doing, and uh, we we hope to 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 aid the mission by our participation. So to connect with Tassin and basically with Papex, obviously Papex is more as fiber packaging producer, and we started looking into renewables uh, a couple of years ago because we understand that by shifting away from single-use plastic and the plastic in general, we're tapping into a resource of wood cellulose, and obviously this is a definite uh, cell uh, resource. So obviously by by moving to wood. We support deforestation and uh, we decrease biodiversity, which is not good in the end. So Paypex is working with some of the largest companies in the world and we see the large uh, quantities. Yeah. So if we're talking about companies like, I don't know, let's say Procter & Gamble, we're talking about 1.5 million tons of packaging material per year. So by moving this tonnage from one side to another resource is, of course, a massive hit for, for the resources. So we we'll started thinking about this and we started, started to test with different raw materials and eventually we came across hemp. So today products like this are, are already producible and we produce them in the commercial uh, series production today. Uh, so we're not limited by, by the shapes. So basically any shape that Papex produces, be it like Tassin said, uh, uh, transportation trays, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, and, and stuff like this. So all of this is producible in with hemp cellulose. Yeah, so it looks simple, but it's not. Why? Because as a gentleman before, before me presented, hemp fibers are very interesting. They have very good organic properties, but they're quite difficult to process. And it starts already from the field. So uh, I'm, I'm a little bit always, and disencouraged when people say hemp growing is very easy, no water, no pesticide, like super easy stuff. Uh, it's actually not like this. Uh, so you need a lot of infrastructure and investment and a lot of capex in order to actually process this whole story. So what we did uh, when we uh, um, did the um, 
proof of concept and we were able to to secure um secure this technology we understood that we need to produce this uh on a big scale because Apex is running large factories and these factories need constant quality. So you can't do it in, in some uh, research environment or R&D place or in some garage. You need to have a proper plant and you need to have proper operations. So uh, in 2021, we kicked off the Ukrainian hemp project uh, with the mission to grow uh, and process industrial hemp. And as the name suggests, we did it in Ukraine for multiple reasons, especially because of scale, because uh, we're talking about paybacks, we're talking about large numbers of, uh, of uh, raw material that are required. And if we're talking about other paper mills, I see there, there, there are a couple of people here uh, from the paper industry. So you understand that, that the scale up is very important. So we need a lot of, a lot of space and Ukraine is perfect fit for that. Just unfortunately, because of the war, we are, we're in a difficult position, but we hope very much that the situation will change soon. So what we do there, we grow industrial hemp in general now this season for, we plan to go beyond 2000 hectares and we do basically the, the, the whole harvesting. So we do the, the seeds, the uh, biomass, and uh, we do the primary processing and the secondary processing. So we build a completely new plant on Greenfield, uh, Ukrainian hemp works, there we do the primary processing and basically decortication, secondary processing and production of hemp pulp. So hemp pulp is a material that uh, has been developed with Papex uh, over the last years. And it's a material that is specially trimmed and designed for a molded fiber packaging industry. So it's, it's, a, it's a material that considers all the challenges and requirements in this industry and is specially uh, developed to to be directly usable in the production machinery. So this is what we do. All this is being produced and shipped to, to, to Europe, where we eventually produce products like I just showed you, or basically all of the products that you see here in, in, in this room are directly producible from, from this material. Simultaneously, of course, we produce fibers, tribes, seed, and uh, yeah, we also we also trade with the uh, and distribute the machinery that we use. So this is our status quo. But today we're talking about paper. We're talking about the usage of hemp in in the paper and packaging industry. So today the status quo that we have, and as Tassin rightfully said, industrial hemp raw material is making its position in the packaging industry. Because of course, everybody understands the sustainable aspect, but we have a lot of regulatory aspects, right? So where does this material go? Into which waste stream? How is it regulated? How is the waste managed? How is the certification going on? All these are, are important points that has to be lobbied first. And, and, and so basically there is no proper regulation on about hemp pulp packaging in Europe and 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 uh, how to deal with this packaging, how the consumers should behave. So uh, all of this uh, is very important, which is why we are attending um, platforms like like yours, because we understand that we only can do it collectively together. Yeah, so so we need we need a proper hemp club. <laughs> so so uh, this is a good platform and opportunity to actually communicate that hemp raw material or hemp packaging is real. It's, it, it is being produced, it is being sold to the customer, and we need some particular guidelines to make this packaging solutions, uh, yeah, simply adaptable to, to, to the current system. And so that we can also use this packaging, not only in secondary packaging, but also in primary packaging in very complex divisions like cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, food contact packaging, and so on and so on and so on. And this is exactly what we're doing there. So yeah, I think at this moment, uh, I will I will probably pause. Maybe I can show you a small uh, uh, small drop from our production side. So just as you have some visual aspect. Yeah, it was, it's been quite a challenge to build in war, I can tell you. Don't, don't try to do it at home, as they say. <laughs> so, 
uh, yeah, I literally had a ballistic missile uh, over over the field one time. So yeah, it's it's uh, it, it has been a challenge, but we're happy to have done this milestone. And today, with the Papax Group, we are uh, preparing for uh, international scale. So uh, obviously, we understand that we need hundreds of such factories. So in the next years, we will actively engage ourselves in uh, in uh, in uh, setting up these factories in major geographies. We're talking about North America, South America, Asia, Middle East, Australia. 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 So we're we're going quite global with this um, because we we had a good learning curve. Today we know what it takes, and uh, uh, we we understand how to efficiently integrate this material into proper industrial production stream. So um, this is this is what we do, and this is what we want to do in the future. And if anybody in this room wants to join us, support us, partner with us, if you have good ideas, if you if you think that you uh, can 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 support us on this mission, please we're open to any synergies, cooperations, and uh, yeah, let's let's uh, let's uh, Scale up hemp. Okay, so I see there are some questions or not, or I don't know. But the whole issue, uh, okay, this was Francesco. Francesco, hi, nice to read you. I hope to see you soon. So yeah, I think from, uh, from my side, uh, that's all. Guys, questions, anything, let me know. We are available. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and uh, for sharing with us your knowledge. Are there any questions? No? Thank you. Thank you for the kudos on the presentation. Uh, thank you. Best regards to Portugal. Uh, uh, very clear. Da, 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 da. Uh, when do you expect? <laughs> good question. Uh, very good question. When do you expect hemp to be big in the packaging industry? Uh, you want to? Oh, okay. the floor, so. Yeah. Well, I think <clears throat> I think it was. <laughs> it was big. It, it was, was big one hundred years one hundred years ago. I demonstrate to you one really um, um, uh, example which would change my mind of of thinking about everything. So this is a bottle. It is from nineteen hundred twenty five, and the producer from this bottle was Henkel. is one of our biggest customer here, and it was from hemp and it was a fiber bottle for for um, shoulder pulver for puda etc. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is very interesting that be before the industrialization of, of plastic and uh, Dupont and uh, Rockefeller and I don't know who else, um, in the uh, beginning of 1900, so um, hemp was really one of the biggest in textile and in, in packagings, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it's very interesting that today we um, custom uh, customize uh, products for, for different or uh, fiber bottles again 100 years later. You know, so um, people like uh, Stora Enso, Metza, Amcor, etc. Everybody's joining at the moment in molded pulp. So there is a consolidation on the market, and everybody wants to have their skin in the game. And I think the uh, forest um, uh, industry is a little bit under pressure because of due to footprint LCAs, etc. They have to change. So um, the volumes maybe are at the moment not so interesting that everybody's going there, but this gives us a chance to make a really big position there. And uh, in the next years, um, and with a uh, with, uh, very um, important uh, power of, of people like us, it will change, so I'm very sure. So I don't know if everybody knows, but I'm also the president of the European Molded Part Producer Association, so which is based in Berlin and Brussels, and this is exactly that what we're doing. So end of the day, we will make the start to bring our productions in ham from cellulose, and then the other 40 co uh, companies in, in Europe who are joining the empire and globally will do the same thing. So we are doing 
the proof of concepts, we bring it in the market with our customers, we make the calculations, we work a little bit more in the green lobbying to change the streams, and then we will be there. Yeah, I'm sure in the next um, short term, three to five years, this will be very big business. I hope it answered the question a little. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say how are you? So we can go on with Tom Harrington. No, Jimmy Cottrell here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Hello. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, I don't have uh, slides or anything like that. I've never done a webinar. <clears throat> I'm from uh, Mill 26 Cottrell Paper Company. Uh, we're a family business. We've been in business for 98 years. My great-grandfather in invented an industrial uh, electrical sheet made out of cotton rags. We've been selling that sheet for 98 years in Rock City Falls, New York. Um, during COVID, we got a little slow. Um, started working with some different fibers, developed a 100% industrial hemp sheet of paper. Um, I'm the director of Cottrell Paper Company. I've been here for 25 years. I'm vice president of Mill 26. Uh, I've been here for 25 years, basically started cutting the grass, worked with all kinds of different fibers from cotton to wood to now hemp. And it's the strongest, most amazing fiber that my little family mills ever worked with. Uh, we've been in business for 98 years here and, uh, now in our fourth generation, uh, we've made this new product here, and I'm excited to be here with Maria and telling you guys and showing you guys and everything you guys are doing is is very very cool. So uh, we we've, we've uh, basically start with the fiber. Um, it's a 95 bast to five herd. Basically, we need the cleanest fibers that these uh, growers and the cortification plants can supply. My small mill can chew up a uh, hundred thousand pounds of fiber a week. Uh, we've uh, now uh, installed a paper bag machine so I can fold and print on 100% hemp paper bags from size number two all the way up to size number 12. And this is a 100% hemp paper bag right here made out of just the stalks and stems. At an industrial scale, and the stuff prints really well, too. I know it's tough for you guys to see. I don't have slides or nothing, but we just made our new website, mill26.com. And uh, these papers are one of a kind. I mean, you guys are in the hemp field, hemp markets. You guys know a lot about this stuff, but the hemp fiber is 50% more hydrophobic than uh, regular tree pulp paper. And the hemp paper or the regular paper straw out there has got a bad rep doesn't work the best. I've just uh, installed a brand new state-of-the-art paper straw machine, starting to uh, build the best paper straw. I've already made one that lasts in water for about a week. My kid used it for, and I tell him, I'm like, but throw that out, I got more. So we're gonna develop the newest, best straw the world's ever seen that doesn't have a bad wrap that will it just, it saves the whole carbon footprint. My family business has been green since 1926. So this whole hemp line just brings our, our carbon footprint even lower. Um, let's see here. Basically we can, uh, we can take a uh, truckloads of fiber process, hundred thousand pounds a week. Probably I can process it into rolls, sheets, bags can be used for packaging tubes drinking straws and then if you want to talk the cannabis world filter tips the little filter tips everybody's putting into joints little s tips um the sky's the limit with paper Every, we turned to plastic and now uh mills like mine are starting to work with this fiber and i'm a small paper mill i have 40 employees I make paper, my cotton and wood pulp papers, I make them 24 six right now. So if I added a day of production in hemp, I could probably add another million pounds of hemp on, on the floor 
a year right now without scaling up. Um, I'm looking at about $2 million worth of upgrades to process this fiber faster. Um, I mean, I can process a 12 foot stock and uh, after it's the court got, went through the decortification machines and, um, but it's gotta be 95 bass. I mean, I need the cleanest fibers. If I'm making a, a drinking straw or a filter tip, I need organically grown hemp. If I'm making a paper bag, I could, I could use something that maybe was grown in a field to clean soil or whatnot. But really, we want the, the cleanest fibers that we can be supplied to make the cleanest, greenest papers on the planet here at Mill 26. We have actually have tests to prove that this stuff is some of the cleanest paper that's ever been tested. We naturally make a, a really extensively cleaned wood pulp sheet for wrapping wire and stuff in the electrical world. So when the world finds out about this hemp sheet that we've developed and figures out how clean it is, we really think it's going to change the game in a lot of markets. Now, we went after packaging, but my small mill and when I process the stalks and stems, it slows down production. That's why a lot of the big mills have it already changed all the packaging over because production, if you've seen the other sides of them guys with their machines plugged up, you got to really work on the fiber to get it to where it needs to make the sheet you want to make. Now, we've never patented anything here at Cacho Paper Mill 26. We're a proprietary sheet. We, we make a specialty product the world has can't or hasn't been able to repeat, and we're proud of that. So this new hemp sheet is now another one-off sheet that my family paper mill has developed. And you notice the color, it looks just like the bales of fiber. Um, here's a business card. Why isn't everybody's business card on 100% hemp? You know, they're putting it on a, a, a post-consumer waste mixed with a little flakes of hemp in there, but this is made from 100% hemp. There's nothing in there. There's no glue. I can go up to 12 mil thick on my paper machine. So, but I can make up to eighth inch board. I got to convert. I got converting. I can do sheets up to eighth inch board. I can do coils, reams. Like I said, we got a state of the art paper bag machine. I can spit out 250 bags a minute with a four color printer. You can put your logo on it. So, we'd really like to be able to get away from the natural tree bag and use a hemp bag in the in the future here the paper bag was invented in saratoga springs by a guy named george west about 150 years ago in these mills here on the cater ross creek now to have my family paper mill be in business for 98 years and come back circle process hemp stalks into pulp make sheet rolls of paper and now form them into 100% hemp paper bags. I think that's just a threat to the old paper bag in general. So basically right now I can supply the, I can supply people with rolls, sheets, bags. I'm working on straws, but really I want to sell paper. I don't want to put in every converting machine. I put in the paper bag machine because paper bags got, they're taken off. You know, and every machine had no toll time. Or when I send them a roll of paper, they want to patent my 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 roll my bag and say they're the hemp paper bag. So I went out and I bought a brand new machine, installed it. I got a few orders. We're filling right now a couple ten thousand bag orders in the cannabis industry. Um, so we really think it's going to take off. We're uh, we're really excited and we're happy to work with the growers, the the cortification people, Maria. Everybody that's doing stuff like this to push this whole carbon footprint back to where we were 100 years ago. And then mills like mine can help. Now, I won't be able to supply everybody. I'm a small family paper mill. I don't have 200 mills like a lot of places do. But will I be able to supply a specialty sheet to some specialty markets? Yes. I mean, I, I make paper for shotgun tubes. I make uh, shotgun shells. I make paper for rocket, rocket shells. We make specialty paper that is strong. We don't make weak paper we don't make cheap paper to say so it's more expensive we make it at a slower rate but it's a specialty product so if you want a specialty hemp sheet that's 100 percent hemp that's the strongest paper in the world we can help you out um okay Th thank you very much i'm so sorry to interrupt you but no, we that's fine the late with the schedule i see just a question in the chat 
so we can you can answer um, to this question and then we skip to the next uh, speak the, the last speakers so uh jimmy where do you uh where do you source your hemp uh, what is your view on the development of the hemp fiber production production in the usa canada so three four years ago i sourced my first hemp out of canada and then i sourced out of europe netherlands and then now I've sourced out of Texas. I have probably 200,000 200, pounds of fiber on the floor and 100,000 pounds of rolls, finished rolls in my warehouse ready to produce all the way from 60 GSM up to eighth inch board. Um, but the deal with all that sourcing it is Europe is about 10 years ahead of the United States, maybe 20. And Canada is about 10 or five ahead of the United States. So being there further ahead of us, the price is cheaper for about the same quality fiber. So I want to I want to buy from the United States. I want to buy from North America. I want to keep it here if I can. But will I buy from everywhere and work everybody into the circle as long as they got clean 95% fast? Yes. I mean, we just got to all get to where the price is is down and everybody's growing it because right now it's expensive. I mean, you want everybody wants to go to packaging, but when most of the world's using a, a product that is a third of the price to make that box, that's a, a tough deal to fight. You're in there and, and the, it's tough for them to consider that. So I just think we all need to scale up to get where, where we got to be. I have another old paper mill on Route 29 with 20, 30 million in the right orders. I'll fire up. Um, and who knows if if we got to build more as we get going. So that's basically that, Francesco. Thanks for the question. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I left the floor to uh, Katerina Heyman, the last speakers. So I'd like to share my screen. So hoping you can see everything. Um, I I see animals. I don't know. I don't see your presentation. Um, I think that is both only the desktop. I don't know. Why? Can you see um, this screen? Well, yeah. late? Yes. Yes, perfect. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> starting now. Um, what you can see is um, the Lake Tegernsee, which is in Bavaria and the southern part of Germany, surrounded by the Alps. And Gmund is a um, yeah, small town next to that lake. So here you can see yeah, here you can see our company, um, tiny building. Um, our company is established in uh, 8029. So we are passionate paper makers um, since 8029, and it is a family owned business since 94. So um, in fourth generation, and as an independent manufacturer, Quant is a pioneer in modern paper technology and the place where nature and energy efficient high technique equipment works hand in hand. So we produce in Bavaria, it is made in Germany. And yeah, we have those strong roots. Um, we're especially environmentally friendly and um, modern, innovative, as I said, that goes hand in hand. And uh, we only use plant-based material, so no plastic, and we focus on yeah, being honest um, that there is no greenwashing like we have sometimes, but um, yeah, we focus on the plant-based products. Um, here you can see, um, yeah, some paper of us. Um, we we like to um, have a, variety, a great variety of um, paper for our customers and um, give them a great, great diversity um yeah in in good quality paper and um we produce natural paper and try to make um everyday life more valuable for our customers so um 
Yeah. Together with brands, we create um, project-based customized papers and uh, they are customized in material, surfaces and colors. So um, our customers can, can choose their own paper. And here you can see some products from our, um, yeah, we sell also in our web shop. So yeah, you, what, what you can do with paper, notebooks, cards, and yeah, a different variety on, on other paper products. And um, for almost 200 years, we stood for solid color design paper. So yeah, um, impressive surfaces, as I said, and um, with the renewable raw material, um, we'd let, we, we give um, paper innovations to our clients. And yeah, we can uh, produce over 100,000 different versions of paper um, by mixing surfaces, colors, and fibers. So we have wood-based, um, cotton, hand-based, um, yeah, different fibers. Now I'd like to introduce you our hemp paper, um, which is a collection we have different collections of paper um, and that is um, the Gmund Hanf I like to focus and we um, hit the market with our hemp paper which is also 100% hemp in 2021 and yeah the, the long fibers make the paper um, firm in structure and soft on the touch and wild in its appearance and um, because of the long fibers, um, the production is difficult, as you all said. Uh, but we made it to produce 100% hemp paper in best quality. And uh, yeah, so um, with Mund Hanf, um, Mund makes a statement for ecological action and is the winner of the German Sustainability Award for the industrial production of hemp paper as a pet packaging alternative. And here you can see our um, compendium, which is um, a book to that collection. And we offer the paper in several grammages from paper weight up to cardboard weight. And um, yeah, now I can tell you or give you some facts um, about the differences between hemp and wood. Um, we have it also in this book for our customers um, that, yeah, they have the advantages of hemp at, at the point. So first, um, one hectare of hemp yields as much as paper uh, um, as four hectares of forest. So yeah, output is, is more. Hemp does not deplete the soil and new plants are planted immediately after harvesting and hemp fibers are naturally light in color so you, there's less bleach needed and um, common hanf paper is produced without dyes and the fibers of hemp pulp are five times longer than the fibers of wood pulp so um, hemp is especially stronger and more stable than wood. And uh, the long fibers improve uh, the waste paper cycle. And uh, yeah, that's why also hemp fibers can be recycled especially often. And uh, for us, hemp is uh, a real game changer. We love that material also, our customers do. And I have a problem with my presentation. Can you see the next slide? I don't know. It is, I can't go further. Uh, yeah. okay. okay, now yes. Now, <laughs> and there is, um, yeah, at a point, uh, the advantages of our hand paper in that booklet I said, and uh, we also made it to, um, to, to certify our hemp paper 
by um, Cradle to Cradle Silver. Um, Cradle to Cradle certification um, is important for us because um, with Cradle to Cradle, um, the, the paper goes, goes from Cradle to Cradle instead of from Cradle to Crave. Um, with Cradle to Cradle material flows um, become circles and waste become raw material for new products. So um, it's a consequent circular economy. Um, also other, um, other um, papers are Cradle to Cradle certified and TAMP it is um, yeah, the, the newest step in our company. So now I can give you an overview about the papers. We have it in three different qualities, 10% um, hemp with pure pulp, and 50% hemp we uh, mixed with um, recycled paper fibers, and the best version with 100% pure hemp pulp. And um, yeah. Hum, Mund Hanf, hemp is suitable for many common printing techniques and uh, yeah, the normal printing techniques, especially for blind embossing. So because of its long fibers, you can go up to several steps in blind embossing and create incredible, incredible results. Um, you can uh, see some, some results. And as, as you said, um, hemp, Paper is cool and always has been. Hemp is one of the first plants used by humankind. And uh, hemp is extremely pest resistant and very easy to cultivate. So um, yeah, a real game changer for us. And I'll give you an overview about some applications um, our customers um, produced with hemp paper. So we, um, the hemp paper is strong for packaging. So you can see some hemp oil which is wrapped in hemp packages or packaging. And also um, a brochure, um, saliva um, produced with our hemp paper because it fits very well to their um, clove hemp line or collection. And yeah, we also have um, with Clico, it's a champagne a producer um, packaging or we customized um, the packaging for with Clico um, because um, yeah, the, the story is, is quite good because Champagne, Champagne, the region in France is also great hemp region and yeah we made it also to give different colors to the hemp paper and yeah the, the customer could tell a, a great story around his product. Yes, basically, that was uh, yeah, my introducing of the company and the hand paper. Um, and I'm happy if you have any questions to answer that. And yeah, happy to, to join that network. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Uh, I see two questions in the, in the chat. Um, when you talk about long fiber, what do you mean? How long is the fiber you use? And the second one is uh, regarding the dyeing of hemp paper, how uh, is hemp resistant to this process? Which type of natural colorants do you see? Do you do you use? Um, how long the fibers are? I can't answer because it is. Um... Yeah, a secret of our paper makers. Um, and because of the color um, for that special customer, it was the first time we used colors um, for the, the, the paper. And sorry, didn't got that question quite well because I can't see it um, on my screen. Can you repeat it, please? That would be perfect. So I... Yes, you can uh, interrupt. Uh, yes. And you can uh, read in in the um, in the chat. Okay, I will. Mm -hmm. So probably um, it's better for you. From Rakele and from uh, Sheila. Um, long fibers. Yes, I can't tell about the fibers and the length of them. Um, how is hemp resistant to 
this process? Which type of natural correlations do you use? Um, we only use, um, as I said, it's credit to credit. So we use um, natural based colors and um, how it is made, I, I can't tell you now, but I can figure out and give it into the network um, if I can yeah, find it out. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so we can mm, go in the final part of the webinar, so the Q&A session. So I ask all those who have additional questions to please feel free to ask them now. I don't know if there are some additional questions. Okay. I don't see any question in the chat. So I think that uh, we have reached the end of the webinar. Um, before I conclude, I want to thank you to all our participants for your interest and speaker for the valuable contribution and to share uh, your knowledge and experience with us today. I want to inform you that the recording of today's session, along with all the presentation, will be shared with, uh, with you via mail in the coming day. And uh, I want to inform speakers who haven't yet shared with me their, their presentation that you will receive an email from me shortly to share your materials. And uh, if for any reason uh, you prefer not to share your presentation, kindly kindly respond to me to the mail to, to let us know. So uh, once again, thank you. Thank you for all um, for your participation. Have a, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thanks bye -bye. everyone. Appreciate bye -bye. it. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Bye, -bye. bye. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Goodbye. Jimmy. You listen to Jimmy. Yeah, I'm here. How, how many pounds of hemp do you work a week? I can make 100,000 pounds a week. You can make so much. Yeah, I'm an industrial paper mill. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah, have a good day. Go to you.